Welcome to Sobriety Checkpoint. Are you a parent in recovery, wishing for peace and emotional sobriety? Do you find yourself up late at night, Googling things like how to overcome negative thinking or why is my heart racing? Do you wake up with big, ambitious goals only to feel resentful and irritable when you put everyone else's needs first and leave no time for yourself again? Hey, I'm Felicia. I'm a 12-step returned therapist, and I too have battled anxiety and that critical inner voice. All I wanted was peace and just a little bit of time to myself. I tried to strive and achieve to find happiness, but that only left me with more anxiety. I finally realized I needed to discover my true identity to find the peace I was striving to attain. In this podcast, you're going to find solutions to navigating mental health, spirituality, and relationships to experience the peace you've been craving. It's time for that desperately sought after solo target run. Grab your keys and let's go for a drive. There's no judgment or breathalyzer at this sobriety checkpoint. I can show you the way. All I can do is to so this reading is from Alcoholics Anonymous Daily Reflections. Yesterday's baggage. For the wise have always known that no one can make much of his life until self-searching becomes a regular habit, until he is able to admit and accept what he finds, and until he patiently and persistently tries to correct what is wrong. 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, page 88. I have more than enough to handle today without dragging along yesterday's baggage too. I must balance today's books if I am to have a chance tomorrow. So I ask myself if I have erred and how I can avoid repeating that particular behavior. Did I hurt anyone? Did I help anyone? And how? Some of today is bound to spill over into tomorrow, but most of it need not if I make an honest daily inventory. So I read this this morning and I was thinking about what I was going to talk about today on this podcast when I when I met with you. I feel like this is a really cool place for me to talk about some of the things that I'm I'm working on that I'm not I'm not there yet. And I feel like that's kind of one of that. That's what this brought up, right? So kind of having to self-search and knowing that there's a handful of things that, that I want to change, that I want to do, that I want to work on as far as my, my sobriety goes, um, and my, just my mental health, my overall well being. So for example, I'm exhausted today. I'm, I'm really tired and for no other reason than staying up late, doing nothing, being online, (laughs) being online. I mean, I can't even tell you what I was spending my time on. I mean, I, I did, I did publish an episode last night, but after that, I mean, it was like an extra hour after that, that I was just scrolling mindlessly because I was just scrolling online, doing things that I think were urgent at the time. I'm probably messing with my calendar. I don't know. I don't even remember what I was doing. And at the time I was like, oh, I have to do this. I have to do this now. And I really should have been, should have been in bed. And it's kind of been this, this habit that has been going on now for this week. I was on a roll with going to bed at a decent time so I could get up and do a morning routine. And now, and I have to get up before the kids, you know, they're four and two and they like to get up at, you know, five thirty six in the morning. So if I want a little bit of time to myself for a morning routine, I need to get up at five and which means I need to go to bed by nine or 10. And when that doesn't happen, it's just a, it's a, um, what is that thing that I'm thinking of? See, there goes my brain. Um, domino effect. There it is. There's a domino effect for the next day. And I know that this particular reading has more to do with relationships. I think, you know, when I do my, daily inventory. It's about my behavior and how have I, you know, right. Did I hurt anyone? Did I help anyone? So kind of just checking in on how am I being as a, as a person? And I guess Mm. it is connected to making sure that I get enough sleep because if I don't get enough sleep, I'm just going to be crabby. So I think that talking about, (laughs) talking about that and that habit is completely relevant and connected to, to this reading. So you know, there's things I I 
need to change. And I think the very first thing is, is bedtime. So that way it can spill over into the next day. See there, there it goes too. some of today is bound to spill over into tomorrow. And yeah. I think that for me, it's huge how I end my day is going to spill over into, into how I start my next day. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good reading. It brings up some stuff in me. Like um, it's a hard thing to do, isn't it? Like if you think to, to maintain your peace of mind, your serenity, you have to every day take, take stock of what you've been doing for the day and make sure you've behaved in the right way. And like, I think like, I've got to a point now where I think I kind of do this on as it's happening. Like I don't, I I don't leave things till the end of the day now. Like my brain kind of recognizes when I've been an asshole pretty much instantly. Like I can remember the other day, like I mean, I got pissed off at my girlfriend for, for some reason, for something. And like she was in the kitchen doing stuff and I stropped off upstairs and put the telephone upstairs I don't think she even noticed that I'd like gone upstairs and put the telly on. She might have thought I was going to the toilet and I was sat there thinking, what the fuck are you doing? Like I'm being a child, like throwing my toys out the pram and dropping upstairs for something so silly. I don't even remember what it was over now, but like I recognized it straight away and was like, just turn the telly off, go back downstairs and just pretend like nothing happened <laughs> and just hope that she didn't notice that you dropped off like a baby. I went back downstairs and she was just still like doing whatever she did in the kitchen. And I just carried on like, oh yeah, you're right, babe. <laughs> so she like, didn't notice any of it. She did, she, she did, I mean, she noticed I, I left the room, but I don't think she realized I went out of the room in a strop. Yeah. I wouldn't think. But if I stayed upstairs out of the way watching telly, then she would have obviously known that I'd stropped off. Um, there'd have been no reason for me to be up there. Mm-hmm. So I recognized what I was doing straight away and thought, I'm just being a little fucking baby. Like, Stop being a stop being stupid. Sort yourself out. And I went back downstairs and got away with it. Like, <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting being able to catch myself in that as well and and make a shift, like pivot from that. Because I know in the past, I mean, even even in my recovery, but for sure before I was sober, you know, if I was going to get into one of those moods. It, it wasn't going to shift that day. Like it was the whole day. The whole day oh, was yeah. shot after that. So I don't know. What do you attribute that to as far as like being able to make that shift? Have you always been able to sort of stop and make that shift? Or no, you sort no, of, were you all. like that too? Where it's like you no. once you're in a mood, it's like, okay, the whole day is shot. Have you ever heard there's a study called transactional analysis? Mm-hmm. Um, and what it's based on is... Every person has three ego states, which is uh, adult, parent, and child. So adult is when you're behaving like an adult and things are going normally and you're being sensible. Parent is when you're like, I'm better than you and I know best and I'm going to tell you what you should be doing kind of thing. And child is when you're like, throw your toys out the pram, behave like a baby, throw a tantrum. And since like reading about that study and going in depth and like I was, I was seeing a counselor once and we went through the stuff there as well. And it's interesting because you can have two people that are, so when two people are having a transaction, yeah, like one could be in parent mode and the other could respond in child mode. And then it's firing back in, in funny ways all the time, like one's one way, one's another. But you can also, on the flip side, you could have like one person who speaks to another person as an adult, but the person receiving that information feels that it comes across as more like a parent, like they're being criticized mm-hmm. and they could, and they could react in like the, the, the child ego state and the person who's being an adult is thinking, what the fuck's this? Why are they reacting like that to what I've said? Because they think it's a completely rational thing. So yeah, I've kind of over the years, like of recovery and learning stuff like that it's quite easy for me to react in a certain way to something and go hang on a minute you've been a bit of a child here this is child ego state sort yourself out and readdress the issue like so 
I think that's why it's become over the years, it's become a bit more of a like a not instant fix, but I can recognize things quicker these days. Yeah. I I think I have a, a similar experience. I've gotten really into something called internal family systems. And that there's some similarities with what you're saying. The you said there was the child, the the adult, and the parent. Yeah. So the child, the adult, and the parent. And so in internal family systems, the adult would be considered the self. So I learn a lot about leading with what they call self energy. And the child and the parent that are inside uh, are considered parts. So in, in, in this approach to kind of looking at yourself and, and, and doing this self-searching, you start to get to know these different parts of you. There's definitely, you know, that parent, critical parent, and there's, there's that child, there's a teenager. I mean, for me, there's a lot, there's a lot of different parts that I've been able to explore and kind of figure out. And in this particular um, kind of like looking at yourself, it's about getting to know self and starting to show compassion to these parts. You know, so if I have this part that is acting childish, trying to figure out like, okay, what's going on with you? What is it that you need? Because sometimes, you know, this child needs something, you know, if I'm storming off or, or acting, you know, throwing a tantrum with my husband, that little girl inside needs something and, you know, needs something from me. So it's like, okay, well, what is that? So, yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely some similarities, but between that, but I have, I have fallen in love with, with IFS and, it's been a really great way for me to get to know myself for sure. I, I first went to the, I went to the cancer early this year because um, my mum passed away in January and um, it was quite sudden. And uh, I was a bit like my, my patience levels of people was like minimal. Like I flip at the, the tiniest thing. I went through work, went to see a counselor and we were going through different scenarios of when I'd kind of lost my patience really quickly with people. And we got to the bottom of it and we and we realized that the majority of the time it was like what was triggering me was if um, someone was, if I saw them as coming across as like in a critical parent mode, like as if they were kind of like belittling, judging me and making me feel not good enough, then I was getting defensive and like snapping back in a like, well, oh, fuck you kind of way. Um and yeah, it's, a lot of it comes through that that transactional analysis. Like, so I'm aware of it now. So, like, I've been able to work on it over the last couple of months. And yeah, I've not been. I don't. I don't remember any instances in the last couple of months where I've flipped at someone for no real reason. Yeah. yeah. If, if I if I explain what you do, you, you, it'll seem ridiculous. So, like, I was in a shop uh, on my lunch break at work. And the queue was massive because there was only one person working on the tills. So it took like um, about 10 minutes to of queuing up. And I went over with, I'd saved up loads of national, I don't know if you ever, like we've got national lottery scratch cards where you get instant win on, on the lottery kind of thing. I saved up a few of them. I had about about 15 quid saved up. And um, I needed to cash the cards in before I could buy the stuff that I had because I had no cash on me. So I got to the front of the queue, went to give the lady the cards, and she said, oh, I can't do that, it's too busy. And I was like, what do you mean you can't do it? He's like, no, it's too busy, you have to come back at 2 o'clock. And I, I I felt like she made me feel like I didn't matter, like I wasn't important, because, mm -hmm. and I, instead, instead of explaining to her that I needed the money from the scratch cards before I could pay for the stuff that I wanted, I just threw the stuff, like, on the counter and said, well, fucking keep that then, and walked out. And I was like, wow, that's like an extreme reaction to like quite a small thing. Just because she made me feel like I wasn't important. Like it, I didn't matter because everyone else in the, like the amount of time she stood there arguing with me, she could have just done the scratch cards and give me the money and that would have been it over. But mm -hmm. yeah, so it, it was simply over nothing really. And I walked out feeling really bad. And I was like talking to my counselor, like I feel really bad. Like I should, should I go and apologize? But I don't. The, the the office I work at, we moved location now, so I never have to go in that shop again. So I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I had um, a situation yesterday. I got a, a message from my kid's school. I have a, my, my two-year-old is in a biting phase and mm-hmm. I got this message saying that, you know, she was in, she was playing with a friend and they, they were fighting over this toy and she bit, she bit some kid at school. And it said, unfortunately, she's going to have to be picked up. (laughs) And it was interesting because I noticed that there was like some different parts of me that had different like uh, reactions to that. She Mm. was bit last week at school. So I was, I was, (laughs) there was this part that got really upset. And I was like, well, that kid better got, better have gotten sent home last week. (laughs) You know? (laughs) And, and this part was, was upset about that, you know, not knowing, I mean, maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but I, you know, I, I, I take off, I go to the school and, and I'm recognizing that there's, there's these different parts activated by this situation, this part that's like somewhat upset that, that she's being sent home. Another part that's thinking, you know, man, are you a bad, you're a bad mom because your kid bites. And then, and then I had self that's, that's trying to regulate these different parts that are experiencing different things about the situation. And, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the part that was telling me that, you know, about being upset, like, oh, this kid better have gotten sent home. You know, I was, I was sort I had, I actually did close my eyes. I was in the car, I drove up and, and I, I was thinking about that and I was like, all right, well, this might be something to talk to the teacher about, but let's do it in a calm way. You know, what you're saying is like bringing the, the, the adult to the situation. So, yeah. you know, I wanted to bring self to the situation because there was a discussion that needed to be had, you know, you don't just pick up, pick up the kid and leave and don't say anything at all, right? You want to have a conversation and, you know, how do you do it like an adult without being like this little kid that's like, oh, you know, the other kid better have gotten sent home too. And then, you know, this other part that's like, oh, you're a bad mom. And then I had to regulate that part and kind of think about like, no, this kid's two. That's what two-year-olds do sometimes. And that has nothing to do with me. I'm not sure what to do about it. Maybe something, maybe nothing. I don't know. But, you know, I get to the school, I pick her up and it was pretty cool because i was able to talk to the teacher and i wasn't being passive i felt like i was actually bringing being able to to show up and and be assertive and kind of like bring that adult and one of the things that was really cool like after i left it felt like these different parts of me were satisfied with how i reacted because when i if i were to react like a little kid um because i have done that like i completely relate to what you what you shared. I've done that. I've done that too. I've done those types of things, flip out on people who didn't deserve it. I did that at the grocery store one time. I flipped out on some lady over some cake. (laughs) Oh, well, that's allowed. If it's it's about cake. (laughs) She like made some mistake or she wasn't understanding what I was trying to, I'm like, what I was trying to to tell her I needed, right? I needed, I needed this cake. Give me the cake. And and the reason I flipped out on her was actually because it, it had to do with my mom. Earlier in the day, my mom gave my son yogurt. And it was when he was a baby. And, and you know, it was like he wasn't really eating that much food. And, I, you know, I was going to introduce yogurt. And, you know, this is like first baby, first year, crazy, controlling, anxious mom. The yogurt wasn't a big deal, but. I wanted to give him yogurt, right? My mom gave him the yogurt. And then I flipped out on some lady over cake because my mom, because my mom gave my kid yogurt, you know? So (laughs) So, it's it's totally understandable. Yeah. So I've been there with you on the, on the flip outs. And, you know, I felt pretty cool yesterday about being able to show up in a different way. It's good to have that time. Like before I was so impulsive, like, and even like because like my mum died this year, so I'm 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 talking like nearly ten years sober that happened, and I'm losing my temper with people in, in a shop over something silly. So it's like it's, you have to like you're working with yourself all the time. Like the shit never goes away. Like how to live a normal life, and being able to have that time to like reset. And I had to do it the other day. Like I went to I took my daughter to um, a trampoline park. And my my 
fiance booked it um and i said you need to book it for me as well and she said no if you're there with like your with your daughter you're you can like spectate and walk around with her and that's fine I was like okay that's cool so i would like my, my my daughter's got some um anger issues at the moment and like can flip out quite easily so when she's with other children it's kind of you gotta keep a close eye um so i was walking around the company park with her and one of the staff members came over and said have you got a wristband on and i said no i'm with my daughter and she went oh yeah but you can't be in here you haven't got a wristband and i was like oh. so i went up to the cafe and i was like thinking about it for a while and then my girlfriend phoned me and I explained the situation. She was like, oh, yeah, she said, like, normally they're fine with it. They've never told me that I can't be in there. And I looked around and I saw there was other parents in there without wristbands on that were like, and they were going on the trampolines with their kids as well. And I was thinking, well, why is it okay for them and not for me? Like, that's not, so I took a few minutes to kind of like think about what I was going to say. I had the argument in my head all planned out. I'm going to say this. They are going to say this. And then I was say this <laughs> I walked down to the receptionist and I was like um she said is everything okay and I said no not really and I just like in a calmly explained to her the situation so let my daughter has got behavioral issues I need to be there if she flipped out I have to be close by to kind of support her and help her through it I'm not very happy about being told to leave and she went oh I'm so sorry that shouldn't have happened and she went and spoke to the staff member and told them that they were in the wrong for telling me that I couldn't be there um and then I was walking around with my daughter for the rest of the time it was like i was saying before six months ago or when i was drinking like that reaction would have been so impulsive i'd have just flipped out and gone i'd have probably shouted at the woman who was telling me to come out in the first place i'd have been like telling her to go fuck off and stuff you know what i mean um, yeah, no, for sure yeah i love that when i was talking about the yogurt situation same thing i was eight years or the cake situation, right? I was eight years sober. So, I mean, this is completely about progress. And I feel like, you know, living sober is about this constant self-searching, becoming a, becoming a habit, not getting, you know, and then trying to not criticize yourself when you, when you mess up, when you do these things that are like, man, like this isn't, this isn't who I want to be. And I think one of the things that's really cool about being in recovery is having having the ability and the internal tools and resources to actually, you know, clean up my mess. Mm. And I didn't have that before. But so this is it's, it's, it comes back to the defense of character, doesn't it? Like trying to get rid of those. Like I'm a I'm a believer that I love the twelve steps. I love the mechanics of it. I love how it works. But that's one step that I don't agree with is like having God remove all these defense of character. I don't think you can ever remove those characteristics. They have to, they're always in you. They always will be like, and healthy levels of some of these characteristics is a good thing. Like fear, like you have to have a healthy level of fear in your life because that protects you from danger. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's managing, it's, yeah, it's managing those things, isn't it? Like, and like the anger and rage and flipping out of people, it's something that, is still there within us and can come out when we least expect it and it's just learning how to manage it better and so loads of people i've spoken to in, in the rooms have always said um live by the three p's pause pray proceed um that's what i try and do it's like giving yourself a barrier between what's happened and your reaction and if you give yourself enough space in between those things you can always react better yeah, that's really cool. I um I think I heard you say that another time too, and that really stood out to me. Pause. Yeah, I, I say the same shit over and over again. To be honest, oh, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Pause, pray, proceed. I mean, the thing is, is that I mean, the repetition's necessary, you know, both for yourself and I mean, that stood out to me when you said it before as well. And you know, I think it's an important thing to to repeat so I repeat myself all the time you ask my best friend you know she's like Felicia you already told me that <laughs> yeah. listen, to, listen to all the podcasts I've done it's just the same thing on repeat <laughs> yep yep I hear you on that so well cool well this was this was awesome this was fun I feel like I'm starting to get my sea legs when it comes to um doing these podcast recordings so it's starting to starting to be more fun for me how about for you yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love it like it's for me it's it's like I mean, this one's one of the more fun podcasts for me because it's like 
it's just two people having a conversation and there's no there's no script there's no plan there's no none of us neither of us have gone right this is what i'm going to say it just flows it's a conversation i like i prefer it like that it's nice yeah it's really cool what comes out after doing a reading too uh, and just like oh that surprised me so that's mm. why i like the flow of not kind of having it planned because i feel like it co- whatever comes out is supposed to so all right well thank you this was awesome Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If so, would you take 30 seconds and share it with another parent in recovery who may be looking for solutions to mental health and sobriety? Also, please leave a quick review on Apple Podcasts so other parents just like you can find the show. I'm super excited to know this podcast is helping you. Tune in to new episodes every Thursday. I'll see you back here on your next Target Run. Until next time.